So thank you everyone for joining us for today's GSA Fleet Desktop Workshop on our short-term rental program. With that, I'm gonna turn things over to Joe Neumdowski. Thanks, Stacy. Good morning, everyone. Um, in case you don't know me, my name is Jody Wadomski. I'm the short-term rental branch chief. Really excited to, to talk to you about the STR program today and some, some tips for using the program and how to best utilize it. Um, as Stacy mentioned, just to reiterate, again, please use the Q&A box for questions. We'll be answering questions throughout the presentation. Um, may stop the presentation as well and answer one live if it's going to be relevant to, to the whole audience. Um, and with and we should have plenty of time for questions at the end as well. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to, to Kendrin uh, to get things started. Thanks, Joe. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kendra Stocklosa, and I am a program analyst with the GSA Fleet's Short Term Rental Program. I would first like to thank you all for tuning into this desktop workshop today. Our goal is to provide a general overview of the STR program and the services that we provide. We're also going to provide some tips and reminders, as well as go over some of our newly added features to include the latest gsafleet.gov release, the wallet. As a reminder, please feel free to use the Q&A box to ask any questions. Joe will be monitoring answering questions throughout the presentation. We may also stop and address a question directly if it will be beneficial to highlight to the full audience. Here's our agenda and the topics that we plan to cover today. We'll first provide a general overview of what the short-term rental program is, how it can be used, and the benefits and advantages of using us for your vehicle and equipment rental needs. We'll then get into the standard process for utilizing the STR program and maximizing your chances of filling your rental needs. We frequently get questions on how to extend a rental if your initial rental period is expiring and you still need the vehicles and or equipment. We'll discuss what that looks like, the limitations within the program, and how to best handle these situations. Once we've discussed the standard STR process, we'll also briefly touch on our emergency response procedures and expediting rental requests. Lastly, we'll address the wallet in gsafleet.gov and the new fleet rental bills. Just last month, rental bills were split from GSA fleet leasing bills, providing customers with separated costs and more visibility into their rental activity. Before we get into the presentation, we wanted to ask a quick question to see how many of you in the audience have used the short-term rental program prior to today. Please raise your hand if you used STR before. Okay, seeing some hands. Well, I'm glad there is some experience with the program. For the benefit of those that aren't familiar with the STR program, here are the basics. The short-term rental program is a service offered through the GSA fleet program. We provide vehicles and equipment for short-term needs and specialize in seasonal work, special events, and surge requirements. We're also set up to provide temporary replacement vehicles and or equipment that is out of service due to maintenance issues or accidents. Emergency response is another pillar of our offerings. Short-term rental is the primary response mechanism for GSA's fleet's emergency response needs. Our vehicles can be rented for up to 119 days and equipment for up to one year. The standard turnaround time for requesting vehicles and equipment through STR is 72 business hours. Once the request is submitted, it goes to eligible vendors to quote for 48 business hours with you then being able to pick vehicles and equipment up 24 hours later. This timeline can be expedited for emergency support as well. And we'll discuss that in more detail later on. We should also note that we encourage customers to provide as much lead time as possible when submitting requests. Providing more time allows us and vendors more time to adjust if your exact requirements aren't available at that time. 
The best part is that all of your procurement requirements are taken care of by our program to provide you with quick access to vehicles and equipment at the lowest possible rates. We have a contracting staff on hand to award task orders to SCR, so you do not need to be a contracting officer to utilize our program. Some of the benefits of using the short-term rental program are, we can provide the lowest available commercial rates as we compete every request, regardless of the dollar amount. So if there is a single vehicle request for a single day or 100 vehicles for 119 days, we are still competing the request among all eligible vendors. This ensures we are getting the best available rate for those vehicles on that particular day. The program provides an easy, hassle-free procurement. As mentioned, we have contracting officers that review each request and issue orders based on your requirements and vendor selections. We have a convenient online request system that can be accessed 24-7. Fuel cards can be ordered with every rental. Fuel is not included in the rates, so any charges will simply pass through on your monthly GSA rental bill. STR rental charges appear in their own bill, separate from lease items. We'll discuss this further, but by separating the bills, it allows us to include additional information on the rentals. There are no fees for additional drivers. For most vehicle types, anyone over the age of 18 that is authorized by your agency can operate the vehicles. There are vehicle types such as 15 passenger vans that some vendors restrict to 25 or older in their contract. And there is no penalty for early turn-ins. You will only be charged for the time you have the rentals. So if you request vehicles for 30 days and only end up needing them for two weeks, you're only going to pay for the two weeks that you had the vehicles. Just to reiterate again, one of the best benefits of the STR program is that you don't have to be a contracting officer to use the program. We provide an easy to use electronic ordering system and have contracting officers on staff ready to assist. Hey, Kendra, before we get started, we've got a, a good question here. Yeah. Um, the, the question from Nina, can this program be used when a GSA vehicle has been requested and is not available? Um, I assume you're referring to the leasing program and, and if it's not available at the moment. And, and yes, you can use STR for, for a temporary solution until a, a leased vehicle or permanent solution becomes available if, if the need is for longer than 120 days. Thank you, Joe. We have another question here, and we want to talk about how many vehicles and equipment types we have for the program. For this question, we have enabled the chat box, so please put your answer in the chat box. How many vehicles and equipment types does the STR program offer? Is it A, 10 vehicles and 50 equipment items, B, 50 vehicles and 10K equipment items, C, 150 vehicles and 150 equipment items, or D, 70 vehicles and 11K equipment items. Okay, seeing a lot of C's here. Okay, we see a lot of C's here. Unfortunately, um, that is the incorrect answer, but if you wrote D, that is the correct answer. <laughs> As you can see in this list, we have a wide range of offerings. We offer over 70 types of vehicles covering all vehicle types, including sedans, SUVs, and passenger vans, all the way up to light trucks, box trucks, buses, and tandem axle tractors and trailers. On the equipment side, we actually have over 11,000 items under contract but we only list around 550 of the most commonly requested items on our website. This is due to an effort to keep the website easy to navigate and use without scrolling through pages and pages of offerings. If you don't see something listed, please contact us and we'll check to see if it's something that we can provide through STR. Some of the more common items provided through our program are aerial lifting equipment, such as boom lifts and scissor lifts, Earth moving equipment such as excavators, skid stairs, and backhoes, 
forklifts of all kinds and other material handling equipment, generators and other electrical equipment, portable heaters and or AC units, light towers, welders, and do watering pumps for up to six inches. And we also have a number of specialty vehicles that I'll discuss further on the next slide. Over the years, specialty vehicles and equipment have become a large part of the STR program. As mentioned, we now offer over 11,000 equipment pieces. I mentioned the commonly requested items previously, but to reiterate, earth moving equipment, material handling equipment, light towers, HVAC equipment, and dewatering pumps. This extensive offering list, including equipment accessories, positions the STR program to support your agency at the project level. So not only can we provide the skid steer loader or forklift, but we can also provide the brush mower, the auger and breaker attachments needed to complete your mission. Another example would be suction and discharge hoses to be used with the dewatering pump or cables and distribution boxes to be used with the generator. This allows us to offer full packages for all of your equipment rental needs. Everything is of course, subject to availability. Snow plows are going to be readily available this time of year, but in short supply during winter. So please plan accordingly to ensure that you have the equipment you need reserved. And again, if there's something that you need that is not listed on the website, please contact us and we can see if we can provide it. We also offer a variety of specialty vehicles like dump trucks. We have a variety of options ranging from light duty chassis trucks with a mini dump bed, to heavy duty 25 yard dump trucks and even a large earth moving articulated dump truck. Bucket trucks, we have a number of boom lengths available through our vendors. Crash attenuator trucks, these are the trucks with the crash attachment on the back of the truck with an arrow board or other message board designed to absorb a crash impact. Under bridge inspection trucks and trailers, we've provided a handful of these. They're extremely rare in rental fleets, but it is an offering. These trucks and trailers sit on a bridge and have an arm that reaches to the side and below the bridge for inspection and or repair of the bridge. And utility maintenance trucks. These are simply the vocational body trucks that have the utility boxes with locking cabinets in lieu of a traditional pickup truck bed. We have also been able to work with our vendors to get additional items like pontoon excavators, rock crushing equipment, frack tanks, and large earth moving scrapers. Even if something is outside of the box, please let us know and we will see if it's something that we can do. The short-term rental program is supported by many vendors and all of the major rental players are covered. Enterprise, Hertz, Dollar Thrifty, and Avis Budget provide nationwide support for all light duty vehicle types. We also have a number of smaller vendors that provide localized support in certain areas of the country, such as All Car Leasing, Acme Auto Leasing, and USAFE Auto Rental. Work trucks and utility vehicle markets are covered by Herc Rentals and FlexFleet. And lastly, we have some vendors whose focus is specialty vehicles, such as Masters Transportation and Auto Max for buses, and Rider Truck Rental for box trucks, refrigerated trucks and trailers, and semi tractors. On the equipment side, we partner with all of the major rental providers, including Herc Rentals, United Rentals, and Sunville. We also added a new equipment vendor recently, Atlantic Lift Systems, who provide aerial lifting equipment and forklifts in the Northeast. And Federal Contract Corps provides nationwide support and partners with Caterpillar to provide CAT equipment through our program. So what does this all cost? Well, there's a small fee that is charged to customers once a request has been awarded. This fee is designed to cover GSA's fleet overhead and expenses for operating the STR program, including website maintenance, design, and improvements. The fee structure is a sliding scale based on the award amount, starting with the flat $35 fee for anything under $701, and then going to a percentage-based calculation down to 1% of the total if the award is greater than $50,000. You can find a further breakdown on our informational website at www.gsa.gov backslash str. 
Also on this website, you can find our program ceiling rates. These documents show the highest possible rate that you can be charged for a rental through our program, excluding non-exempt fees. So please know that all requests are competed among eligible vendors, so we often see discounts off of these contracted ceiling rates. Because of these discounts, we also show the average monthly rate that has been awarded for a specific rental over the past quarter. These documents are updated quarterly and can be used to forecast potential pricing through our program and to make an analysis whether renting, leasing, or purchasing is the best option for your mission. We encourage you to utilize these rates and averages for budgeting prior to submitting your request, as these prices would be the highest that they can be incurred per request. Other costs that should be considered are fuel and damage costs. As mentioned previously, any charges incurred on the fuel cards are passed through on your GSA fleet rental bill. WEX will be listed as the vendor and the description will list the request number and STR fuel. GARS or governmental administration rate supplement is prohibited by the underlying contract used by the short-term rental program. Because of this, any damage to the rented vehicles is submitted by the rental provider to GSA as a damage claim. We review each claim to confirm the damage and costs before issuing payment to the vendor. All damage costs are then passed through to your rental bill as well. Thank you. Now that we've discussed the basics of what STR offers and the cost, we're going to go through the standard ordering procedure for short-term rentals. You will need to register at www.str.gsa.gov with the pre-established BOAC or billing office address code before requests can be created. It is important to note that multiple users can register and submit requests under the same BOAC. If you are unfamiliar with your BOAC, please contact our office and we can assist you with locating it or creating the new one. Then you will create and submit your request. You will input your vehicle requirements, customer location, and fuel card delivery address. Please be sure to use a special requirements box located in the last tab to note any rebid requests and or special requirements to include a four by four truck or crew cab, or even a box truck with a lift gate, just to name a couple. As mentioned earlier, the standard quoting time is 48 business hours. After closing, you will receive email notification with any quotes from eligible vendors. You will then need to log back into WebSTR and select a quote using the select vendor screen. After a vendor has been selected, STR contracting officers will receive a notification and a review for award. All STR RFQs are issued with best value evaluation criteria, so please note that price is always the number one factor. But if you choose to select a higher cost vendor, you need to have a proper justification to establish why that vendor is a better value. Once the request is awarded, you'll receive notification via email. You will then be contacted directly by the awarded vendor to arrange pickup or delivery as requested. If you order fuel cards with your request, they are shipped via UPS to the specified address after the vendor selection has been made. Cards are delivered two business days following the vendor selection. Please be advised that fuel cards cannot be shipped to PO boxes. So let's say your vehicle is out of commission and the mechanic is requesting one more week to complete the necessary repairs. Well, you're in luck because that's what a rebid request is for. It is important to remember that your rebid request must be identical to the original request. If your original request included one mid-size sedan, you cannot create a rebid request for two mid-size sedans or one 15-passenger van simply because you need more space it must match the exact rental that you currently possess. If a different vehicle type or additional vehicles are needed, you should submit a new request as a separate requirement. A rebid request is needed because we can't modify an awarded request. A rebid is simply an entirely new request in WebSTR. 
And when creating the request, please be sure to complete the following. First, have the start date and time immediately begin after the current rentals end date and time. So if your original contract ends on, let's say today at 3 p.m., you'd want your rebuild request to begin on today at 3.01 p.m. through your new expected return date. Under the special requirements section, input rebid of current request number. You're gonna mark the transition cost under the best value criteria. If the cost of transition to a new vendor will be taken into consideration during the vendor selection. Please be sure to add another fuel card to that order as fuel cards are paired with the request number and not the specific vehicle. They will expire at the end of your initial request. So you cannot use an expired contract fuel card with a new request. Okay, please see the screenshot for step two of the rebid process. This may be the most important step as using the special requirements section to note the original rebid request number allows us to keep track of one, either the vehicle you currently have and are extending, or two, the new vehicle that you have acquired if changing vendors, and when you return the previous one for billing purposes. Are you wanting to keep the same vendor? Well, we cannot unfortunately guarantee the same vendor. However, we are typically able to accommodate. Marking transition costs allows the CEO to take costs to switch vendors into consideration when awarding. So for example, if your current vendor isn't the lowest cost and the cost to swap vendors either directly or indirectly through disruption of your mission is greater than the difference, we will be sure to take that into consideration. We have another question we'd like you all to answer based on what we just discussed. We've enabled the chat function for this question as well, so please be sure to put your answer in the chat box. When placing a rebid request, what is the most important step to complete to allow us to track your current vehicle and rebid process? Is it A, ordering a fuel card, B, using the special requirement function and typing rebid of original request number, C, making sure your name is on the request, or D, marking transition costs. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of these. So great. If you answer B, you are correct, as it is the most important. But it is also imperative that you order a fuel card and mark transition costs on your rebid requests. We're now going to transition into discussing STR and our ability to support customers during emergencies. Expedited ordering is available during declared national emergencies and vehicles can be procured in less than 72 hours subject to vendor availability. Some of the recent emergencies we've supported are hurricanes Fiona and Ian, California flooding and mudslides, Typhoon Muar in Guam, and recently the wildfires in Hawaii. We've also begun taking requests for Hurricane Idalia in Florida. STR is the primary emergency response for GSA fleet with a dedicated phone number to call for support for national emergencies. The phone number is listed below. This phone number along with our emergency response procedures are activated during declared national emergencies. We're able to expedite request times and have historically been able to provide vehicles and equipment in as little as a few hours or even same day. This is of course subject to vendor availability, which can be a challenge depending on the nature of the emergency. After receiving your requirements, we coordinate directly with vendors to confirm availability or substitute options. Once availability is confirmed, we can shorten turnaround time and have contracting officers standing by ready to assist and issue awards. Here are some tips for requesting emergency support. Have your requirements ready. As soon as you let us know that you need vehicle support, we want to start working with vendors immediately. 
Follow up emails with a phone call. If you email us after hours, give us a call on the emergency line to ensure that we have your requirements and begin working on your request. Let us know if you are working multiple channels. This one is really important. So if you request 30 light towers through us and also request 30 light towers through vendor X, we need to know about it so that we are both not trying to fight for the same equipment. This can severely impact vendors' ability to support emergencies either through STR or your direct contracting efforts. Have your funding ready. No money, no car. <laughs> Just kidding, but not quite. Vehicles and equipment are at a premium during emergencies. We want to ensure that we have, if we have something for you, we can pull the trigger quickly as we can't secure items without an awarded request. Consider current supply and inventory issues and be flexible. During the COVID-19 pandemic, supply was at a premium and it was very difficult to source vehicles. So please be flexible. If you request a 15 passenger van, please let us know if you can accept two minivans in place of the 15 passenger van. This will help streamline the request and ensure we get you your vehicles as quickly as possible. Contact us for help. We're here to help and be your advocate during these difficult situations. And please be patient. We are working as fast as we can. Please take into consideration that, vehicle, that vendors can be affected as well in these situations. They may have trouble getting employees into local branches to confirm availability, or if any vehicles and equipment were damaged during the emergency event. We're now gonna switch gears and talk about billing through the STR program. The other frequently asked question we would like to cover is how do I pay for a short-term rental? Vendors submit billing to GSA monthly for all ongoing and completed rentals. Our office then reviews each individual invoice for accuracy. This review includes ensuring the rates are correct, any tax or fees billed were in the vendor's initial quotes, and that the dates being billed are within the dates awarded on the request. It is important to note that we do not bill customers until this review has been completed and the invoice is approved. This ensures that our billing is correct before it is passed to customer bills. If we reject an invoice, it goes back to the vendor to correct and resubmit to the STR office. This can slow down billing, but as previously stated, we want to ensure that all billing is correct before it goes out to you. Once an invoice has been approved, Payment is sent to the vendor and customers will receive a receipt notifying them of the charges incurred. You will then see these charges listed on the following month's VCSS bill. STR charges are now their own GSA bill. Previously, they would show up as a separate line item on your overall GSA fleet bill. Leasing bills and rental bills are now separate and both can be downloaded from VCSS. Please note that the statement number nomenclature has changed with this new update. Rental bills will now begin with the J for IPAC statements and K for non-IPAC statements. Please note that you'll need to review both leasing and rental bills each month. You can now pay your bill via IPAC, check, or credit card. GSA's preferred payment is IPAC. One new change with splitting rental bills is that DLD customers can now pay with IPAC, whereas before, these bills had to be paid mainly through DFAS. Please be sure to update your accounting information and treasury accounting symbol on the wallet in gsafleet.gov in order to make IPAC payments. And before discussing our newly added feature, we're going to ask you just one last question. Have you logged into gsafleets.gov wallet feature to review your tasks and accounting information? Please raise your hand if you logged into the wallet and checked your accounting information. Well, I'm glad to see that quite a few of you have logged into the wallet. If you haven't, please make sure to do so soon. One of the newest GSAfleet.gov releases is the wallet. 
We wanted to highlight the wallet release because it changes how customers can pay for their rental bills and how also released in conjunction with the new rental bill format. The wallet maintains all of your agency's account information, including the treasury account symbol. We just want to remind everyone that a task is required for every BOAC and can be updated in the wallet as well as your accounting information for IPAC payment. The wallet also replaces the existing functionality of SpeedPay, which allow for IPAC payments for DLD customers. One of the new and exciting features that is included in the wallet is that DLD agencies can now pay their STR bills via IPAC. Bills no longer need to be paid manually. This information may look familiar as it has been covered in previous desktop workshops, specifically regarding the wallet release. We wanted to touch on it again to stress the importance of reviewing your tasks and accounting information within the wallet. The GSA Fleet Wallet feature manages your treasury account symbol, also known as your TAS requirements. Your TAS is an identification code assigned by the treasury to an individual appropriation, receipt, or other fund account. All federal BOACs that span fleet offerings purchasing, leasing, and STR must have a TAS in the wallet. And there must be a one-in-one -one alignment of BOAC and TAS for each fleet offering. On this last slide, we wanted to show you an example of the new rental bills that can be downloaded from BCSS. With the previous bill, the only identifying information for a rental through STR was the contract number. This was listed in the description field and listed the contract slash request number, along with whether the charge was for rent, fuel, or damage. When reviewing the new bill format, the type of charge, whether it's rental, fuel, or damage, will still be specified in the description section on your bill along with the request number. Some other features include being able to see the specific vendor under vendor name, as well as the request number, the rental location, and billing period that this charge covers. These changes and new billing format should give customers more transparency and insight into charges being billed on their rental bills. Well, that covers all of the material that we have for you all today. And thank you again for attending today's desktop workshop. If you have any questions following the session or would like further information, you can reach us in a number of ways. Our support center is staffed Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Central Time. And you can reach us via email at gsa underscore rental at gsa.gov or via telephone at 1-866-886-1232. We also have a live chat function available on our website, str.gsa.gov. Listed on this slide is our emergency contact support number. And we appreciate your business and look forward to exceeding all of your short-term rental needs. With that, we'll continue to answer any of your questions in the Q&A box. And thank you so much. Thanks, thanks Kendra. And we've got quite a few questions here. Um, I'll go through them uh, and just answer them live at this point. Um, first question here is, what can be done for rentals needed beyond 119 days? Can back-to-back -back STRs be established? Um, recommend that you contact us um, at the, the email address provided there, and we can discuss the best option there. Um, the 120-day limit is in the CFR, um, so we're not um, able to exceed that. Um, you know, typically we need to find a, a more permanent solution if you need vehicles longer than that. Um, but would recommend that you reach out to us, and we can review your specific situation and and see what the best option is. The next question from Norman, um, he's looking for information on buses with drivers. Um, we, we can't provide uh, buses with drivers. We can provide just the buses. You have to provide your own drivers. Um, there is a multiple award schedule, SIN, I believe it's SIN 485, that has uh, transportation services for limousines and buses uh, with drivers. I um, would recommend you look into that. Um, if, if you need a driver, um, you also asked about contraband vans, um, especially cars, detainee vans or security trucks. 
Um, we don't offer any of that. So, you know, most of our offerings are limited to what's available in the commercial um, rental markets. So unfortunately, nothing available there. And then you also mentioned uh, TDY rentals. So the STR program is not for TDY use. Um, it, it is something you have to certify when you're putting in your request. Um, you need to, if, it, if you're looking for a vehicle for, for travel purposes, um, you need to follow your agency's internal guidelines or, you know, the, the um, travel service for, for those types of rentals. Um, next question, what do you recommend when you've tried to get a piece of equipment of differing specs, differing dates, and still no bids received? Um, so Richard, reach out to us at the, the, either the phone number or the email address there. We can look at the specific request um, and, and do market research with vendors to see why we're not getting any, any bids on it. Um, typically, it's, it's availability, but sometimes it's, it's something simple as that where they're not totally sure what the requirements are. So reach out to us and we'd be happy to help you with that. Um, question, if a GSA breaks down, will STR be charged to us or does GSA cover this? Um, so no, you, you would still be charged for it. Um, we'll work with your fleet service representative on the specific situation, but um, we're contracting directly with the commercial rental source. So that cost is passed on to, to your agency. Okay, question, um, do I create a P log if I request a vehicle and use my P card for gas usage? Um, I'm not familiar with a, with a P log, but um, follow your own inter internal agency requirements for that. GSA doesn't require you to keep anything um, as far as gas usage. So um, again, follow your, your agency um, guidelines for if you can use a purchase card for gas. Um, we do offer you know, fuel cards through our Smart Pay 3 contract that can be provided with the rental. Um, as Kendra mentioned, they're shipped via UPS. Um, all charges for those um, that are put on the fuel cards are just passed through to your GSA rental bill um, at the end of each month. Okay, question about rebids with fuel cards. Um, we end up having a period of five to 10 days without a new fuel card. Um, the old one gets shut off. Is there a way around this? Um, the, the best answer for that is to request it, it, it earlier. So um, you can request uh, you know, anything through STR up to a year in advance. So if you know that you're going to need um, you know, vehicles extended, recommend that you give you know, two to three weeks um, you know, notice. You know, submit the request ahead of time. You'll get the, the fuel cards in plenty of time then so you don't have any interruption in, in fuel card service. Boston, um, Edward, Boston Utility Trucks in Hawaii, any resources there? Um, we do have um, some availability in Hawaii. Our bus vendors, unfortunately, don't really have, um, you know, locations in Hawaii. Utility trucks is something that we should be able to do. Um, Herc Rentals is, uh, you know, has utility trucks on contract. They've got a lot of pickup trucks. Um, available in Hawaii that they've told us, especially related to the, the emergency situation there. And um, we also have all of the other big players, as Kendra mentioned, Enterprise Hertz, that, that we should be able to, to find something for you, depending on you know the, the, the actual requirements. So um, if you're not getting any bids through the program, again, sound like a broken record here, but reach out to us. We'll review the situation and make sure that, that we try to fill it. Okay, next question. Although multiple users can put in requests under the same BOAC, is there a way for each user to see all requests and not just their individual requests? Problem is the person out for an extended period of time, others in the office can't do anything with the request. It's a really good comment, really good feedback. Um, unfortunately, right now we don't have that functionality built in. Um, it is something that we've notated, um, you know, as STR, you know, will move eventually move to gsafleet.gov or we're, we're towards the end of the, the fleet modernization. Um, efforts, but that is something that we've we've notated and and uh, you know hope to have more of a solution for in the you know once we move to gsafleet.gov. Um, question from Andrew: What is the accident incident process for STR vehicles? Um, so we typically want you to reach out to the the commercial rental provider that that provided you the vehicle. So if it's Enterprise or Hertz or Avis. Um, they should have a roadside assistance number or you know contact information from the branch where we pick the vehicle up. I want you to follow their um, procedures first to you know if the vehicle is is in, inoperable and needs to be towed, um, they'll help with that. They will help you know and then um, with the reports that are needed on their end. Um, and then as Kendra outlined, you know damage to the vehicle would be submitted to GSA as a damage claim and then and then pass through to your GSA bill once we review it. How is excessive wear and tear handled with STRs? Um, same thing. So if the vehicle's returned and there's um, wear beyond you know, the normal use, um, the vendor has the option to submit a damage claim to us. We review it, um, and, and if it's approved, 
the, the cost is passed on to your GSA rental bill. Keith has a, a question, does GSA rental work overseas? Uh, no. So currently, you know, we're limited to the U.S. and, and territories. Um, we have been able to do some equipment and very limited vehicle rentals in, in Guam and an area in Puerto Rico and the U.S. territories. Um, but right now, we do not have any, um, any coverage beyond, beyond that. Question from Marshall. Prior, prior to submitting a request, is there any way to get even a basic idea of range or of how much it might cost? Um, so Marshall, I'll respond to this in, in the Q&A box too, so it's in writing here, but um, yes. So on our informational website, um, which, which Kendra had outlined and is in, in the slides, um, we have a, a site gsa.gov slash str. The bottom of that page, um, we include a document that has all the ceiling rates for the equipment and vehicle offerings. And so the ceiling rates is the highest rate that you can expect to pay for, for the vehicle. But we also update that quarterly with the actual amount that was paid um, for each vehicle type. So you can go on there and see, okay, um, this is what I can expect to pay, you know, for a sedan given the current market. Next question is how many times can a rental be rebid past 120 days? Um, address this one already. Um, so contact our office if you need a vehicle longer than 120 days. We'll review the situation and make sure we get you the best solution possible for that. Um, question why um, about the billing and timeliness, um, specifically delayed billing from Shauna here. Um, as Kendra outlined, we, we don't invoice um, and bill customers until we get an approved invoice from a vendor. So they submit the billing for us. Um, we typically review it, um, make sure that the rates are correct, make sure there's no taxes and fees that they accidentally left on there that were exempt. Um, make sure that the dates are correct and that sort of thing, and just you know do a, a full invoice review on it. Um, typically, you know it's you know most of the time invoices are approved right away. Occasionally, we do have to reject them back to the vendor to have something corrected. Um, you know, on the invoice that can delay billing a little bit, but we it's something that we monitor really closely because we know um, billing timeliness, especially this time of year on the turn of a fiscal year, is really important to customers. So. Um, if you have uh, a concern about the specific billing situation, reach out to us and be happy to look into it a little further. From a question from Linda, how is the billing documented to the customer? We get charges that show up in our financial system. We've never seen any documentation. How can we get better transparency on what we're paying? Um, great question. So some of that is, is going to be resolved with the new billing um, format that we have that gives some more information. Um, the There's also a receipt. So every time that our office approves an invoice and it's billed to your account. Um, the requesting individual and anybody that is CC'd on that account will get a receipt outlining the charges and explaining the request that, they're, that they were um, with, um, you know, the, the vehicle information, things like that um, gets sent to that customer. That then matches up onto your GSA fleet rental bill at the end of the month. Linda's asking uh, where we can download a bill. So all the bills that uh, that Kendra outlined are through VCSS, it's Vendor Customer Self Service. Um, you'll need to either register your BOAC or request access through vcss.gsa.gov. Question from Timothy: Can you dispute a damage charge? Absolutely. So we, we rely on customers. You're our eyes and ears on the ground for these vehicles. So if you get. Um, uh, build for damage that you believe, you know, is, is not just, or was the damage was there when you picked up the vehicle. Um, you know, if, if that were the situation, um, definitely reach out to us. Always recommend the customers, you know, take a full, um, you know, take pictures of the vehicles before they're, you know, as they're picked up. So you've got a full, um, scope of what, you know, if there was any, you know, even small minor damage on the vehicles, um, you know, when you received it. Um, but yes, we can dispute damage charges. Um, you know, those types of things really help in those disputes. If you've got an inspection report that shows the vehicle was returned, you know, turned in without any damage, um, always want to make sure you get that. Um, so, you know, if, if a situation does come up, we are able to dispute it. Uh, quite to access the STR bill, is that in the VCSS website? Yes, it is in VCSS. You'll just see if you're both a leasing and STR customer, you'll see two separate bills each month now within VCSS. Um, is there a process to set up, establish 7600A through G invoicing for paying bills? It looks like Stacy's answering that one. Um, 
question, how do I create or request a TAS? So that I believe is, is something that's established at the agency level. So I recommend you reach out to your finance office for information on obtaining your TAS. Um, can you add racks or other outfits to non-GSA vehicles? So typically, no. Um, these are commercially rental, rented vehicles. Um, they're not government-owned assets, so we're really not able to make modifications to the vehicles um, you know, during the rentals. So Anita um, has a question. Uh, you mentioned determining if a lease or STR is a better option. What is the process for a cost analysis? Reach out to us. We can review what the STR costs are. We can work with your local fleet service representative to see um, you know, what vehicles are available and, and look at the leasing costs. Um, we'd be happy to, to help you out with that. I have a question for from Rafael. Will the, will, what will the, be the option for fuel card in Puerto Rico? Rental card does not work on the island. Um, so yeah, WEX has very limited, um, very limited acceptance on Puerto Rico. Um, Raphael, we do have a, a, a workaround. So if you reach out to us, we should be able to, to find um, a solution for you. What options do we have if fuel cards do not make it prior to taking the vehicle on a mission? Um, it would depend on the specific situation. Would ask that you reach out to us so we can review it and figure out what the best option is. Um, we can also, you know, if a, a fuel card doesn't arrive in time and you leave to go on a mission, we can request a replacement card and have it shipped to your new destination. Um, you know, you know, but in in the meantime, there's there's no um, no solution for for that time when when you leave. But reach out to us and we'll find the uh, the the best option for you. Are there special requirements to rent a bucket truck? We have needed one in the past, but I would think not just anyone can drive or operate a bucket truck. Um, yes, there, there are operators um, required for a bucket truck. I'm not familiar offhand with what the specific requirements are for that, Linda. So if you feel free to reach out to me directly too, and would be happy to check into that and, uh, and see what the, the, the specific requirements are. Michael I have a, has a question. I've logged into the wallet, but I'm not showing any information after filters. No wallets available. Um, Michael, I would recommend um, you reach out to our, our business oversight branch. It's fleetbusinessoversight at gsa.gov, which I'll put in the your answer here too. They'll be able to help um, with the specific questions on the wallet and, and seeing the information there. Okay, is an... Um, got a, Question, is an out-of-state memo necessary for STR? I work for the Michigan Army National Guard. Uh, no, there's no geographical limitations on STR um, within the US. If you're planning to take the vehicle out of the country, um, you know, similar to the leasing side, you need to make sure that you have the, the proper insurances and coverages because there could be um, some lacking on the Federal Tort Claims Act for liability. But as far as just from state to state, no, there's no um, restrictions on that. How do we get access to VCSS? I think we touched on that. Just go to vcss.gsa.gov um, and there's a link and some instructions on how to either register or request access. Okay, question about the, another question about billing timeliness. Um, I believe we, we did address this. Um, vendors are, a, are required to bill monthly for all ongoing and completed rentals. So typically you should see a bill within a few weeks. Our average time from when we receive a bill from a, from a, from a vendor um, is about two weeks from the end of the rental. Um, you know, but that, as I mentioned, that can get a little bit delayed if we start, if we have, you know, and, and if there's any issues with the invoice that requires us to reject it and go back to the vendor. But typically you should receive a bill within, um, you know, or receive notifications of the charges within a few weeks to a month following the rental. Okay, um, get some other questions here. Is the STR program available for buses to tribally controlled schools? So um, same restrictions apply to STR as the, on the leasing side. So if um, a tribe is an eligible entity that can use GSA fleet leasing, yes, you can use STR as well. Question from Andrew for rental EVs. Will GSA STR also provide the, the charge card? Um, so we haven't gotten into the, there's been limited until very recently, limited um, 
EV offerings in the rental fleet. Everybody's probably seen Hertz has um, an agreement with Tesla that they purchased a number of Teslas. Um, Enterprise has started to add EVs into their fleet. Um, we haven't gotten a ton of that into the STR program yet. So still, um, we can provide a you know, WEX fuel card, but there's going to be acceptance issues at the charging station. So still working through that. Um, Andrew, stay, stay tuned for more information. Um, will travelers be able to reserve short-term rentals themselves or will they need to make the reservation through the BOAC cardholder? Um, that, that depends on your agency. Each agency has different um, requirements for you know, what approvals are needed for STR. Um, would, would check with your fleet manager, your, your contact to see um, who's authorized to, to, to um, request directly from STR if you need to go through the, the BOAC cardholder. Okay, question, are you able to have a request entered by one person, transferred to another person to continue working the actions? Um, currently, no. Um, you know, we can we we can do that um, manually through our help desk at the, the eight six six number or the email box. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, that's we're looking at that capabilities. You know, when STR moves over to GSA Fleet Um Okay. Question from Andrew, why is the GSA request fee non-refundable? I think that was referring to a canceled request. So if you need to request a cancel request, you can email our, our office there and we'll we'll cancel the award. Um, the fee is designed to cover the overhead of operating the program. So um, since and including the contracting and websites. So um, since all of that that work took place, the fee is typically not refunded. Um, if you have a, a, a case where you believe the fee should be refunded, contact us and we'll review the specific situation. Um, quite another question here. If the STR section creates a BOAC for a customer, can the customer then use that same BOAC to lease vehicles if desired? Yes, BOACs aren't restricted to either STR or leasing, they can be used for both. Um, billing will be separate as, as Kendra and outlined. Um, so you'll see a separate leasing and rental bill, but um, you, know, you can use them, use BOACs for both. Uh, question from Patrick, are RV trailers an option? Unfortunately, no, we don't have RVs um, available through, through STR. Question from Noel, once secured, are only select employees allowed to use the vehicle or can it be shared widely to anyone in our service line? So the vehicles can be operated by anyone within your agency that's authorized to, to use the vehicle. So no, they, they don't have to be listed on the, on the contract. Um, or on the request, anybody within your agency can use the vehicles. There are some age restrictions. Um, so it's a 18 or over for all vehicle types. And there's a few um, vendors where they require drivers to be 25 for 15 passenger vans or larger vehicles. Okay, um, all great questions. Comment from Teresa. Oh, with all these questions, it looks like we could use another training STRs. Yeah, we, we can definitely look at reviewing, um, you know, more training sessions. Uh, if you you want to reach out to us, if there's any topics that we didn't discuss here that you think would be beneficial, we would love that feedback. Um, you guys mentioned this is applies to DOD. Does this site apply to DO, Department of Labor too? Um, Tara, I believe you're referring to VCSS. Um, so yes, the VCSS is the is the method to receive your bills through GSA, and then you I think specifically you're asking about the wallet and paying um, via IPAC. Um, yes, the wallet's open to all agencies or is is required for all agencies to use. Um, so it would apply to Department of Labor as well. The the application to DoD only is specific to um, IPAC payments regarding STR bills. Question, are we able to get vehicles with snow plows or spreaders? We do have snow plows available as an accessory on the equipment side of our program. Um, I'll caveat that with that they're limited in the rental um, in the rental markets. So if you need a snow plow, um, probably consider requesting it now to get a reserve. Very difficult to 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 find them, you know, in, in you know November, December, January when when I, they're they're all. Um, on rent and and not available. So yes, but you know, make sure that you plan ahead for for snow plows and spreaders. Uh, 
Okay, um, Kathy, not seeing data for BOAC updates. Um, not sure what you mean by that. Maybe you could type in and, and clarify that. Let's see what else here. Um, from Celia, why do you have to take equipment off rent when we clearly have a start and end date and cannot extend the request without a rebid? Um, not sure the specifics of that. Um, Celia, feel free to reach out to me directly or um, our office there and we'll, we'll, we'll look into your specific situation. And then um, our soldiers that visit from outside the US able to operate an STR. Um, Andrew, check with your um, legal counsel on that, you know, so you know, want to make sure, you know, the, the concern there is if they're covered under liability purposes under the Federal Tort Claims Act. So I would recommend that you reach out to your legal counsel or JAG to, to find out um, specifically if they're authorized to, to operate a GSA vehicle. And then last one is from Crystal. I know for PR total fleet has to be ordered to use the STR vehicles. Yeah, so I, I referenced earlier, um, you know, we do have the capability to order total cards um, in Puerto Rico. Um, need it, It's a manual process to so reach out to us and, and it can take some time. So we wanna review and see if, uh, if, if it um, is a, an option for that particular rental. Last question here, selecting my first rental today. My understanding is that we are billed automatically to our BOAC account. Yeah, so once you select that vendor and you um, you receive a notification that your request has been awarded, you will get uh, um, notification of that award and that's when that STR GSA fee is billed to your account and then all future rentals will just be automatically billed to your BOAC as we, as we approve those invoices and make payment to vendors. Yeah, I think that's all the questions. I'll we we can uh, stay for a few more minutes if there's anything else that comes in. Another question here: Do STRs have to be returned to the same location that they came from, or can they return them to another city? Um, so there is a there is an option when you're submitting the initial request for a one way rental, um, and then you with the pickup the pickup location would be where you entered your renter's address. The one way rental would be the city where you want to return it. Um, there's often a fee associated with that for because the contractor has to move the vehicle back to the original branch. Um, so it is possible it needs to be specified before you know as you're requesting submitting the request um, and not after the fact. Um, Linda, the slides are available on the fleet training website, and I believe Stacy also posted a link to that as well. Um, can accidents be invoiced to a different BOAC for long-term rentals? Um, we'd really need to know the specifics of that situation, Abigail. Um, typically, you know, accidents are you know charged to the BOAC that the vehicle was requested on. Okay. All right. So I do see one little question in there about the, the Q and A's and do we publish them? We don't publish the, the Q and A's directly from these sessions, but um, you know, our teams do sometimes take them and we'll create FAQs or make sure that certain questions are addressed and, and answered on websites or other communication materials. So I encourage you to check out the STR website. Um, and if you have feedback on information that you think would be helpful to add to that, um, you can always reach out to the short-term rental team at their email address there. Also, in addition to the, the STR you know, website that has sort of some overview information, there is then the actual like STR 
sort of application that you can go to that I think also may have some information posted to it. If I spoke out of turn there, Joe, sorry. Um, that last little bit kind of kind of came into my mind as I was talking, so I didn't get a chance to verify that. No, that's a great point, Stacey. Appreciate you bringing that up. Yeah, on, on WebSTR, which is that str.gsa.gov website, we have a link to our STR customer guide, which is a really useful um, resource and has a lot of really good information in it. So thank you. All right. So if you've attended our desktop workshops in the past, you normally will get a follow-up email with a certificate to fill in along with a link to where you can download the presentation from. Those are going to come on a slight delay from this session. Um, there's just some mechanics with the way Zoom works that um, we're not able to get 100% of things done the way we usually do them, but it will be coming. Bear with us. Have some patience. Um, even if you send us an email and ask for it, I can't send it to you because I can't verify that you attended the session because unfortunately I can't actually get the report from today's session. I have to wait for my colleague to come back um, from some leave and then we'll get that all out to you. Um, thank you to Joe and Kendrin. Fantastic presentation. And um, so many questions, I'm not gonna lie, I was not expecting this many questions. It's been a little bit of time since we've had an STR presentation for a desktop workshop. And in the past, we've maybe gotten a dozen questions during them. Um, so the fact that there were so many questions this time was amazing and just shows that you know there's turnover in the fleet community and it is good for us to revisit things because um, you never know when we'll have a lot of people with questions versus just a few people with questions. So appreciate everyone taking your time to join us today. Um, hope you enjoy the rest of your week and the long weekend coming up. Um, take care, everyone. Stay safe. Thank you all. Thanks, everyone.